It's Teardown Tuesday, and today we're going to do a little forensics on a power bar that quit and see what went wrong with it. And was this a fire hazard or was it not? Let's find out what caused this one to stop working. I think today we'll start this video at least for today. Um, we're going to start out doing some forensics because this is a little power bar that uh, apparently went boom. Someone plugged something into it that drew a little bit too much current and uh, everything went everything went boom, so he said. So let's open this one up and just see what happened to it. Now it says on here that it's rating 15 amps, 1875 watts. What was plugged into this was a uh, central vac and it blew up apparently. So let's see what blew up in it. Did something burn or and it, it it actually does turn on it just it's intermittent it, it goes on and off so it's like something is burnt up in it so I figure we'll pull this thing apart for a quick look inside one of these cheap it says it's a protective power strip so let's just see what is in it as far as protection goes it's probably just an MOV but I figured I would show this one off and these are little these are special specialty little short power bars uh, what they're good for is if you have a um, if you have uh, like a electric, like a cabinet, an equipment cabinet for modems and so forth. Uh, these are good for that because they can you know put a power strip and plug in. You don't need to have eight feet of cable all wrapped up. So where did this thing burn up? I mean, it looks okay inside here. It does just have your standard MOV. Hmm. Wonder if it's a switch that went bad. I mean, I don't see anything. I don't see anything that's 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 saying that you know, showing that it's bad. There's no, there's no um, circuit breaker or anything on this unless it's unless it's built into the power switch. It looks just like it's a switch with an MOV across the terminals. And everything else looks... Uh, like I don't see anything that appears to be wrong with it. Let's power it up and see what's going on. So I'll just plug this into my little short, little short cord here and proceed to electrocute myself. But yeah, you see it says it's, it's the switch is on, but there's, there's nothing. If I take my my meter, if I can get this thing to behave and stay up, stay upright without trying to spin around and electrocute me, unruly cords, I tell you. How often is it when you get an extension cord or something, you want it to lie one specific way, and it won't lie that way? Where is the fault? That's what we want to find out. The light is out. Yeah, the power is on. So I think the power is on. The power is on. So there should be power. I think the switch might be bug buggered up on this. That might be what burned up was the switch. So AC volts. We'll just measure the AC volts here as I stick my fingers into 120 volt circuit and see if we've got power. Oh, interesting. Really? Three volts? Hmm. I think it's the cord. It's the cord set that's bad. That is most interesting. Because we do have power. So we should have 120 volts. But we don't. So it's not the strip. It's the, it's the bloody cord. Ohms. I'll put it in diode test so it beeps. We'll see which one of these went open. So we'll first measure the ground electrode. I don't expect that there'll be a, an open there. Okay, now which one's which? Well, let's see here. This should be the... Uh, which one's this? This should be the neutral. This one should be neutral. Hmm. 
Neutral is open. Interesting. Both of these sides are measuring open. This should be the hot one here. And hot works. Hot works. And the neutral went open. Isn't that interesting? I was fully expecting that switch to be the fault. And what's happened is the, the, the line cord here has gone open between neutral and here. Somewhere between here and the prong. How often do you see that happen? I wonder if I just twist this wire. I'll just connect the jumper up here just so that I don't have to hold the, the probe on. I wonder if I give it a twist whether it will make a connection. Okay, so this is this is the neutral side right here. Just see. Oh, look at that! Look at that! It came on there for a minute. You heard it. Where is it broken? Well, this wire itself is shot. So, the next part of our forensics is, we know that the problem's in the cable here. Let's open up the cable and see where the fault is. I thought this was gonna be straightforward and blown switch, and I bet you guys all thought the same thing too. And here we have something that's not a blown switch, it's actually a cord that has failed. I'd be curious to see where that cord failed. Obviously, it was overloaded, but I mean, this is a pretty good sized conductor. You wouldn't think that, uh, I mean, if you look at that conductor, that's, you know, what, number 10 gauge? Looks like a number 10 gauge wire. Why would that fail? Like, why would that, that cable fail? I guess the first thing we can, I was going to cut it off there, but maybe I'll just slice it open and we'll see if we can find any anywhere along here where it's actually. Uh, where it's burned or broken. Just use my trusty snips. Actually, I could probably snip it off there with these two, but. It will be interesting to see if this wire is, is fused or burned somewhere. here and that would indicate that it wasn't manufactured properly so let's see if we can find out where it is broken I, I'm still thinking it's it's in right in the plug here it's got to be right on the plug but the fact that when I twisted it it came on Yeah, there we go. Aha. There is where the fault is, right there. It burned. And probably right down at the at the plug itself. We can see if I open up the wire here, it looks like it's black. So let's just let's just pull the insulation off here. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see it. If we look down closely at the wire here, you can see where it fused. Right there in the middle. So either when this was manufactured it wasn't crimped properly, that's what I'm thinking is it wasn't crimped properly onto the prong and uh, either that or well, we'll, we'll find out. We're going to take this part apart uh, and see whether it broke right where it was connected or right back here. But let's just uh, open this thing up completely. This is where having super sharp electrician scissors comes in handy because they'll cut through this uh, plastic or this rubber 
like a, a hot knife going through butter. These things are incredibly sharp, as you can see. You can cut this piece apart and see where it failed. And also, they cut fingers too, so you got to be careful. almost down to where the prong is itself. i use my side cutters here. It might make it a little easier to peel this back. I just want to see whether, whether it actually burned in here. Oh yeah, it did. You can see it's carbonized right in here. Oh, maybe not. That's No, that's just the, that's just the uh, part of the plug stopper. It's like it's got a molded piece that they, I guess, injection mold. That's what holds the, the uh, pins in place. But it looks like it happened right here at the crimp. That's where it went bad, is right there at the crimp. We'll just remove the rest of this, this plug and see. This gives you some insight of how these are manufactured. The, the plug itself is uh, on a plastic base. And basically, at the factory, they uh, crimp the wires on to the plug and then the injection mold the uh, the rest of the plug around it or they I should say they they crimp the wires onto the, the prongs and then the uh, the injection mold the rest of this plastic around it so if the crimp isn't done right at the factory it could fail but at least if it fails th this uh, this material should be fire retardant so it's uh, it won't catch fire Should be fire retardant anyway. I would think to get their certification, they probably have to uh, pass certain standards for containing a, an arc if something were to fail in the plug here. If we peel the plug back far enough, we can see how these are constructed. So here's the end of the cord here, it comes right through the strain relief and it's all melted in. They basically remove a little bit of insulation from the end of each wire and it's just crimped into the actual plug itself. And how well it's crimped, well, let's see. Let's just pull the wire through here. We'll pull through this wire and just see how much it takes to pull the wire out. Well, it's actually crimped pretty good, but as you can see, But as you can see, the, 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 the wire is actually crimped in there pretty good. At least for the, at least except for these few that didn't appear to be crimped. But again, that may have been just me taking the plug apart. I think what happened on this one here is, and you can see where it's, it's burned right down here, is either it wasn't crimped properly or, and that's very likely the case, is it was not crimped correctly at the time. And... It allowed a little bit of heat to build up in there and burn the wire off because this one here is in incredibly tight. Like I've, I'm twisting this with my pliers and I finally, I didn't even pull it out of the out of the crimp. It actually broke the wires off. This one here, I pulled this out through the jacket. So I think what happened in this case is this was just a defective, uh, had nothing to do with the fact that the fellow that uh, plugged the vacuum into it, overloaded it. I think it was just a bad manufacturer, a bad run. So there you go. There's forensics of a plug. If I take this apart even more, let me just see if I can break this off from the rest of the... I should be able to cut this off. Oh, that, that plug came out. That prong came out. Let's just break this one off here. Yeah, you can see, you can see the crimp. It looks like it wasn't crimped properly at the factory. If you look at the crimps here, look at, look at where the crimp is on this one. Right, it's, it's deep into the into the connector, and on this one here, it looks like it got it right at the edge. That's probably why it came apart. If we look at the good side, it's crimped solid on both sides, you see, and on this one here, it's only crimped partially. This side barely crimped at all. I think that's what happened on this, and that's why this one failed the way that it did. So, anyway, I figured I'd share that one with you. I'm going to uh keep this MOV because MOVs always come in handy and I'm definitely going to keep the little switch with the power indicator with a little neon bulb in it because power switches 
always come in handy. That would go nice into one of those, uh, what amplifier was it that I had with one of these type of switches? I'm keeping the switch and I'm keeping the MOV and the rest of the stuff is going in the bin. Thanks for watching.